Oh, how are you gonna feed me questions for the Q and A? Oh, I can I see it here. I just see the say something? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Say something else? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Nice. Are you gonna feed me questions? Yeah. Because I don't have it up. Should I have it up here too? No, I'll just okay. Sign in the birds live. Okay, let's turn it live. Is it weird that I'm not looking at the chat? We are live, live from New York. It's me. <laughs> All right. Is anyone here? <laughs> Nobody here yet. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Wow, great. It's good to know. Well, without further ado, we're gonna start signing these thank you cards. One person subbed off Nelson. Hello, Nelson. Okay, <laughs> it's just you and us, man. It's just you and us. All right, here we go. So. First thank you card. Wait, you have to explain the premise. <laughs> oh, the premise? The pre pre premise is easy. We're uh, we're signing these thank you cards. These are our, our feel confident thank you cards. So this goes out to all the people who've um, purchased the scar gel. We have scar gels now. Um, actually, do you want to bring me a scar yes, gel? Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Great. So this goes out to everyone who's already purchased one. Um, and they're on the website. So just go to feelconfident.com. It's our first product release and we're excited for it. We've been giving it out in the practice for the last two months. Patients uh, love it. It's, all, it's been tested by, you know, for allergies and by, through a dermatology clinic uh, extensively. So it's very safe and uh, it's meant to improve your scars, the silicone uh, based scar gel. And that's what we're doing. So everyone who's already, so we, we've um, had a bunch of people in the last few days we've only you know had it uh, available in the last like two days so a bunch of people have purchased it so we wanted to say thank you to everyone this is what it looks like here there's a nice bottle inside so we're gonna fill these out and ship them for the people who've already purchased it they're just gonna get this in the mail separately from me and then for those who uh, purchase it now during this live they'll get one of these thank you cards that's gonna be custom written to you and our scar gel. The scar gel ships from Florida. That's where the warehouse is, where we're storing them. Uh, so we're gonna ship that and ship the thank you cards. So that's what we're working on today. And then answering, of course, some uh, questions of yours uh, as we work here to fill out these thank you cards. So that's that's the premise. Ivy wants to know if you're really leaving YouTube. No, I am not, Ivy. If you watch the full video, you <laughs> will have heard that uh, it was a joke. It was an April Fool's joke, maybe in poor taste, as a lot of people complain. But you know, it was just it was just supposed to be a funny little thing. Um, no, I'm not leaving. Here I am. Um, so good. And then this board behind me is showing actually where in the country people have uh, purchased the scar gel from, and so that's kind of cool. And as more people get the scar gel during this live, you'll see them pop up all around the country so that's pretty cool um, one day we might ship them around the world but we're still figuring out you know how to do that so, so first they will be available in Canada which is oh Canada yeah. yeah coming to a Canadian store near you uh -huh. yeah okay great all right so I have this list here through our Shopify uh, first person who purchased scar gel was Jay Mueller so I'm gonna write this out dear this pen works okay can Lily get a shout out from her dad or just wants to know oh hi Lily hi sweetheart that's my daughter she's watching hi Jay Mueller okay so dear Jay Mueller oh of course I clicked on the wrong thing here okay going back there okay one sec let me let me sign this and then I'll answer questions Thanks for your support. Do you have before and after pics with the to the Nikki's video? Before and after pics of? Of scar gel. Oh, scar gel? Scar gel. Yeah, uh, well, the, so we started handing them out to patients post-op, uh, particularly after lip lift surgery, about two months ago. So those patients should start coming back to the office. We do like three-month follow-up visits for photos. 
typically. So they'll start coming back within like a, about another month or so. Nikki, my nurse injector, had a lip lift and she did a, a short video um, at just the one month uh, mark on, on our other channel, City Facial Plastics. So she's been using the scar gel on, on her incision and um, you know it's been going great for her. So we'll do some updated content uh, you know, with her, of course. Um, and so, yeah, so, so plenty of people have been using it already. Uh, good. So here we go. Dear Jay Mueller, thanks for your support. So that's, that's done. Well, yeah, zoom in too, just oh yeah. Add, okay. Sure. All right. Um, Jay Mueller. Here it is. All right. Wait. Here we go. That's it. Yep. So guys, this scar gel has been in the works. This thing right here, this one, for for oh uh, yeah, for about one year. You know, it takes a long time. Uh, we'll probably make a video at some point just showing you guys how this is done, from the time that you have an idea like, oh, I want a new shampoo. I want to create a um, moisturizer. I want to create a scar gel. Um, it, it, it was a big learning curve because I've never done this. You know, no one on my team has experience in this. Um, we didn't outsource it uh, to anyone to, to manage the project. So we just did it ourselves. We had to find a chemist. That took some time. Uh, luckily, actually through family, I was able to get connected to a, a beauty chemist who has over 30 years of experience. And he was freelancing for us uh, and really just uh, an incredible guy and custom formulated everything from scratch. So our first product was the scar gel because we really just wanted to make sure we had the whole process down. So we have to find a place that then, you know, does the, where do you get the bottles from? Where do you get the caps from? How long does that thing that goes into the bottle, the, the whatever that's called, the, the little, little thing that comes off the cap. I don't know what it's called now, but um, the straw, you know, basically that goes into the bottle. How long does it have to be cut exactly to, to be right for this product? Uh, and then, you know, who, who designs the box, the bottle, who prints, you know, each of these things, who manufactures it, you know, because we didn't want to manufacture a ginormous quantity of this stuff because we didn't know, you know, if, if, how it would turn out, who would purchase it, any of that stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the most important thing is how is it even made in the first place? Like, what do you want to put inside of it? How do you select the molecular weights of the silicones that are placed in? What look are you going for? But the cool thing was that we had a chance to customize all of that. And um, I think it turned out great. And we tried different, you know, formulations before, you know, getting this one that, that we really liked. But I made sure that the chemist understood, like, what was important, really, especially for facial scars. And then, of course, you know, it'll work great on, on any part of the body. But, you know, the face is, uh, it's a pretty important area. And uh, that's that's where I do, you know, a lot of my work. And uh, we wanted to make sure that it would work well for the face. So we took, like, the best scar gel that we were already giving out to our patients post-op um, from another company that many surgeons use. And, you know, they make good products. I'm not going to mention the name here. Um, but we were like, how do we make it better? You know, how do we take what they have? which is nice, but then introduce our own twist on it and also keep the ingredients fairly simple and use things that have been uh, you know, implicated in proper wound healing. So the oils that we selected for the scar gel all relate to that. So, so there's a lot of thought that went into the design of it. And then of course, the all the other elements to actually get it like into our hands and then into your hands. And then how do you pick a distribution and, and warehouse you know, center? Um, and then we have to build the website out and we wanted to have a hair side to the website and the skin side. So we have a bunch of products now that are in various stages of development. The um, skincare line is going to essentially be uh, a cleanser, a moisturizer and an HA serum. Um, that's already been formulated and it's going to the next phase, which is shelf stability and onto like uh, patch testing which confirms that it doesn't give people like allergic reactions and all of that so that's going to take months and then we have to get into bottles and then get it made and then it can go out to everyone and then for hair we have a uh, shampoo conditioner and uh, a thickening foam and those three have just finished like the, fi the final um, uh, formulation stage. Uh, we had to do several takes on them to make sure that we were happy 
with how they came out and they have active ingredients that we've discussed in prior videos that have uh, again um, been shown to help with um, some you know hair growth but also it's mainly just as an adjunct to of course the other the generic medications which are on our website so so all those things are coming together and like the question some of you have is like why are we doing this maybe you know we just think that we have like the right eye for quality and we feel that we have you know resources to properly invest into getting this stuff out there so you guys are getting good quality things um and not just like willy-nilly you know just not knowing where to go to get these types of products and and who to trust so so we feel like you know we're, we're the right people for for the job to introduce good quality skin care and hair care that's old So that's where we're at. We're gonna keep going with this. Let's take a, a question. Marco, let's do one. Does mewing and gum chewing work to enhance jawline? How long would it take to see results? Yeah, I mean, that's been uh, somewhat you know debated. Uh, I don't think that those types of results are very long lasting. I think that you could do certain exercises to help promote certain musculature uh, in the base of the tongue uh, and the sides of the face, of course. We have muscles there, so you can work those muscles out to give you some tone and, and change some of the um, you know, uh, appearance elements. But I don't think that you get like long-term benefit from that unless you keep maintaining those types of activities. But it's gonna take time to, to make those muscles change um, shape, you know, on the order of at least three to six months, generally, of, uh, of exercising them. All right, so next person is Erica. Dear, and I don't think this is a HIPAA violation because they're not technically patients of the practice, so they're just people. So I'll just use first names, Erica. I think I should sign with, uh, like, first letter of the last name, the, sure. the initial. Erica A. Thanks for supporting us. Should I the camera? Erica, thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah. And then eventually, what we're going to send some like reviews and things for people to like surveys for people to fill out uh, you know if they've purchased the scar gel and then you guys will see you know the, the, the sort of the review tally on the website as well we'll we'll get to doing that and but again we just focus on creating good products and I think the rest will follow people will soon see that that it's a exceptional product and uh, that'll be good the hair foam slash shampoo long-lasting the shampoo um, and foam mm -hmm. well like all medical therapy um, you need to continue using the shampoo conditioner foam for it to still work and produce results so it's not something that you do a few times and you're just like okay I'm done uh, that's something that people often confuse when it comes to hair surgery versus uh, hair medical therapy they're very much uh, complementary uh, most of the time but the medical therapy is something that you have to continue to do to see results any type of hair medical therapy so that's just something to, to keep in mind but it can surely be a nice uh, adjunct for for people and our hair products even though they have certain actives that are anti-androgenic will still be available for women with some warnings, of course, you have to be careful with um, anti-androgenic types of effects in women, especially of uh, childbearing age. So we'll have all those warnings for everyone uh, once that product becomes available. Oh, one new order, look at that. Oh, yeah, it just came through. All right. You, you, can, you can sign that one. Now? Um, yeah, I'm just giving the name. I guess I can, I wish I could just like check off who's already been done, but I guess I'll just check them. Well, yeah. I can actually check them on my screen. All right, so Walt. we've got Walt. Walt, thanks Walt. 
All right, we're going to write your thank you card right now. Can you ask, maybe Walt will reply, does he want anything special written on uh -huh. his thank you card? This is for Walt. Dear Walt. Walt L. In the chat. <laughs> I assume he is, but you yeah. never know. We can customize our card to Walt. Should I just use first names, Marco? Or initial? You can put an initial as well. I think yeah. that makes it more personal. Okay, cool. I'll keep doing that. Is he uh, responding? I'm Walt L. Nothing yes. special, he says. Yes, oh, Walt. Walt. <laughs> A simple guy. Nothing special. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gary, honestly, I appreciate all the work you do. A question, if I may, I start using minoxidil. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me just show this, and then we'll we'll cover that yeah, one. Yeah. It's coming. I feel like Santa. Special care. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> A Jewish Santa. <laughs> Okay, dear Walt L, really appreciate your support. You rock. Thanks, man. Enjoy it. All right, good. Awesome. Okay, so that's Walt. All right, let's go with the question. Mm -hmm. um, I started using Minoxidil about two years ago. The results are somewhat pleasing, but my hair went from soft to frizzy slash greasy. So I assume that's topical. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So he's been using it for how long? Minoxidil? Two years. Okay, it seems like topical minoxidil has been used for two years. And now the hair just feels greasy. Some people report like a residue on the hair and it's like a frizzier. So that's possible. And that's why we often recommend that people switch from topical minoxidil to oral minoxidil. That's something that has to be, of course, approved by your doctor. It's not FDA approved for uh, oral use. However, it's much more effective that way. There are many studies to support that. We have a video on oral minoxidil that we've already filmed that's being currently edited. Uh, so that will be useful. We're gonna add that to the Feel Confident hair page and also of course just post it to YouTube. So that will be, um, I think, a good video for that person to, to watch. And it's something that can be effective for men and women. Um, and minoxidil, oral minoxidil, can be obtained from feel confident hair um, for both men and women. So something to keep in mind. You don't have to worry about. First of all, also the um, the shedding phase is almost non-existent, whereas it is with the topical. And you don't have to apply it twice a day. You don't get the the greasy hair, the residue. Um, you don't get contact dermatitis from some of the versions of topical minoxidil. All that stuff you can bypass which is good. Okay, next one is um, Amanda. So Amanda M. Dear, and Amanda purchased hers on Friday. Amanda M. We appreciate your support. so grateful for all of you for like you know watching our videos calling the practice you know scheduling consultations emailing us questions uh, you know encouraging us to continue with all these other projects that we have and uh, so thank you for that uh, but also I wanted to point out that uh, my personality and Marco's as well is to like really stick to our promises so really uh, there's never been, I don't think, a time that we've promised something and not delivered on it, and we'll continue to do that. So if there's some ever something, so you can hold us to it. If there's ever something we propose as a new idea, something for the future, and we don't deliver on it, just let us know. We'll we'll, we'll continue to do better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we really like to uh, check off all the boxes and be like, all right, we did that, we did that, and that's very important to us. Um, no empty promises. So um, and keep in mind. So one of our big projects right now is continuing to work on a, uh, an app for the hair transplant community. 
and we want to create a community through an app that gets clinics into the same place as just people looking for information on, on hair, but specifically uh, hair transplant surgery. There are some like Reddit, like subreddits. Um, there are some forums, like old school forums online. Uh, we want to modernize that that process. We want there to be uh, more of a, just a, a welcoming place for clinics and doctors and patients to all meet and interact and find the right fit, right? So we're gonna have clinics we recommend. We're gonna have um, you know, all types of stuff and it's gonna be fun, a nice uh, way to engage. And also there's gonna be um, AI, which you guys have heard through this whole chat GPT. We have our own version for predicting people's hairlines. So that's something, it should be out for beta testing. We're probably just gonna send it to people who are subscribed to our uh, hairlinesnews.com newsletter. And that beta testing will hopefully start within a month. Uh, so we, we have a designer, we have a developer, we have a machine learning expert all involved in that. So that's super exciting. We've been working on that for, how long would you say, Mark? When did Mueller start that stuff? It's been nine months six nine months, nine months yeah. almost nine months in development so you know things that are quality take time uh, and we want you know to deliver useful tools for for folks uh, and so yeah so that's that's some of what we've been working on so this is for amanda m we appreciate your support amanda thank you thanks amanda all right Cool. All right. What else? What other questions? We have a there? donation, five dollar donation from Jay Barry Williams. Okay. Any update on the hair oil you are developing? Well, so I mentioned it maybe what 10, 15 minutes yeah. ago, but we've got um, shampoo, conditioner, and a thickening foam. Uh, not it's not an oil. We might eventually have an oil as well. That that'll be fine. But we're gonna start with just those three. Um, so they we just finished formulating it so meaning like you know so we talk to the chemist right and we tell them we want these active ingredients we want it to smell like this we want it to feel like this all this stuff and then he says okay i think i know what you want he sends us an ingredient list we review it and then and then he makes it right he makes a sample he sends it to us and then we try it out uh, i can't really try it on my head right because i don't have much hair um, as you guys know but we we have you know uh our people uh test it out and uh, and then there's feedback, right? Oh, this one is too drying. Oh, this one uh, doesn't feel right or doesn't uh, smell right or whatever. And then we have to go through all these changes to try to get it right, right? So that that's how it goes. And uh, so we just finished that process for the hair product. So that's exciting. It'll probably take from, you know, cause now we have to do shelf stability testing, then patch testing, then get it manufactured. So figure about five to seven months to be able to actually have it to put on the website and then ship to you so it all takes time you know but but that's where we're at with the hair products but they're going to be good and they're going to be based on the research that we've done uh, based on the the videos that we've already put out that mention some of these actives okay next one is heather dear heather p Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Heather P. Here we go. You don't have to zoom in every time. All right. Okay. Um, what's next, Marco? Who, mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the questions? Do people I have, have a couple of scars on my forehead from shingles about five years ago. They're not they're not so small white scars. Is there anything to do about this? They're not so small white scars. Are they, well, we'd, I'd wanna know uh, if they're flat when you touch them um, compared to, from how long ago did they say? Five. Five years ago? Yep. 
Yeah, so for five years ago, you know, using this type of scar gel is not going to be the most effective. I would say scars up to maybe two years old would be better. Some people use them on like, you know, older scars. Oh, by the way, we have a scarring video that's coming out and that's going to really detail a lot about how scars form, different treatments for scars. So that's hopefully, when do you think, Marco? Probably not this Wednesday? Scarring no, video? No, no. It might not be this Wednesday, Sunday but... Hopefully Sunday we'll get it out there. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so so tune in for that uh, as far as like what to do for scars. But yeah, it depends on like if it's like indented or not. Um, it, it it depends how wide it is. Sometimes surgical options are uh, useful, you know, to consider for like excising a scar and and revising it surgically. Uh, other times, laser resurfacing can be effective, um, and yeah, it just depends on how, how the scar looks. Microneedling is sometimes an option. I don't love microneedling for scars, and I bring that up in, in that scarring talk. But uh, but yeah, I would have to like see that those forehead scars to really be able to comment further. Okay, Rob L. Rob That's for Rob Bell. He ordered his on Saturday. Really appreciate you, Rob Bell. All right, what else you got, Marco? Um, hi, doctor. Uh, kind advice would you would be appreciated for front lines? I guess for front on for hair hairline. Yeah. yeah. What should be used? DHI or Sapphire FUE? I'm planning next month. So yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So remember, we have a video on DHI versus FUE. Uh, you know, just debunking some of the terminology that's used sometimes uh, in a misleading way. So uh, there's the harvest method, right? And that's FUE versus FUT. It sounds like you know, you're pretty set on FUE, which is what most guys end up getting these days. So FUE is the harvest. And then the way that you implant can be using DHI, like implanter pens, which is what DHI is, or sapphire blades, which is just like a sort of a pointed blade option. Uh, there are other blade options. My message is really pick the surgeon uh, not so much just the clinic, pick the surgeon ideally and trust the surgeon and, and trust that their methodology will get you through the case safely and give you the results that you're hoping for. Uh, that's, I think, the best way to approach it. Don't just pick like the tool, right? I mean, it's like going to the barber and being like, I want you to use this scissor to cut my hair. You know, most people don't ask for that. So you just pick your barber and you trust that they'll know which scissors to use to cut your hair in the way that you want it cut. So it's a similar concept. Or if you go to, I don't know, an, a restaurant and you know, you're trusting the chef to create a nice meal for you, right? You're not going to tell them like, oh, I don't like the, <laughs> the knives that, you're, that you've picked out. So it's a similar thing. Um, and, and so, yeah, so trust the surgeon. And, you know, there are many different ways to perform hair transplant surgery. And oftentimes there's not like one right way, right? There's many different ways that can still get you to a great result. Uh, pick the surgeon and, and the rest will fall into place. Dear Lauren L. from Saturday. Dear Lauren L. Thank you for, thank you for your trust. I have terrible handwriting. I'm trying to keep it as orderly as possible, but you're a doctor, it makes sense. Yes, that's why I became a doctor. <laughs> All right, dear Lauren L. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. I have a really dark red mark on my nose bridge after I broke my nose, and the impact split my skin. The scar from the split isn't red, but a really dark red mark next to it. Could this help? Meaning this when was the accident? Mm, I wasn't mentioned in the comments. So the, the, there's a split on the nose and it's still red? It is. It's a really dark red mark. 
dark red mark. So redness after you know an injury or after surgery um, by by an incision usually means that it's still healing. Uh, there is vascular neovascularization we call it new blood vessels that are growing in and that process can take time it can take up to a year sometimes more during that process some people get frustrated with the redness and they want to do something about it one option would be intense pulse light laser for the redness specifically but what the redness is telling me with that person who's complaining about something on their nose that's red after an injury um, by the, by the scar is that chances are it's still in the healing phases so using a scar gel silicone based scar gel like this could be effective you know um, with redness you always want to you know be sure that it's not something else like a spreading infection or something like that but assuming you know, you've gone to your doctor and they've confirmed that there's nothing dangerous going on and it's just some residual redness you could try a scar gel to speed along the recovery not so much of the redness but more for the adjacent uh, you know scar that that's that's formed after thank you Carter. just want to showcase the bottom of the screen right Oh yeah, we can open that up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to do two right now so we can catch up a little bit. Dear Ingrid, and if you order the scar gel, your state You're the best. Oh, we have an update from Ethan to ask about the nose. It's been three years. Oh, three years? Yeah, uh, sometimes the redness can linger. Yeah, definitely see someone locally about it just to make sure there's nothing more dangerous going on. But, um, you know, you can consider a scar gel. But again, the scar gel is not going to help the redness um, recover faster. For the redness, look into intense pulse light laser. You're the best. You're the best, thank you. Okay, great. So that's that. I'm gonna do one more. Just, just looking at the time, just so we stay on track here. I guess we don't have to get everyone done. No. Dear Maureen T. Thanks for taking a chance on us, guys. I'm not writing that, but I'm just letting everyone know. enjoy the product thank you for the support okay good what else any other questions mm -hmm. Hi, Dr. New to the channel. Uh, I've been having alopecia areata universalis for 20 years now. Any new treatments or any eyebrow treatments? Well, there's, uh, you know, watch our video on uh, my journey with alopecia areata. Early on, I tried squaric acid topically. Can't say I love that, so I didn't do it for long. Uh, then I did a systemic immunotherapy, so like allergy shots. And I think that helped with my nail beds. Um, and maybe some very, very early regrowth. And then honestly, I didn't really do anything else. I know some of you guys in your questions on the videos or the comments you were asking like, oh, what have you done to get your eyebrows back? There's just spontaneous regrowth, uh, not putting anything on them. Uh, just, you know, luckily some of the hair grew back. Uh, on the head, it's still uh, patchy, but and it's like nowhere near looking presentable. Um, so I just have to shave in like weird ways because it's like a patch here patch here patch there uh, but at least I got some eyebrows and eyelashes back so I'm, I'm grateful for that so here so feel confident scar gel we introduced this again in the beginning but we're going to show it to you again so the ingredients are on the website feelconfident.com but they're also listed on the back of the box and uh, here so you open it up and you got this little nifty blue bottle on the inside yeah. here we go some instructions on the back and this comes at uh, as a 0 0.95 fluid ounce little bottle and the bottle 
It's like, um, should I use it? Yeah, you can. It's just, I'll need like a tissue, but whatever. Uh, so, so I'll, I don't have to put it on my finger. I'll, I'll sure I'll use it. Just give me like a <laughs> tissue. Uh, so it's like a little pump bottle here. So maybe uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna pump. Yeah, little little pump bottle. So you have to give it some pumps for it to like start working, of course. And so you pump, pump, pump. And then usually, I'll show you. Uh, let me get a Q-tip because we like to put it on a Q-tip. Okay. Looks nice. Price forty-seven dollars. Yes. Okay. So here we go. Oh, give me a second. Uh huh. I can see. Oh, I th I hear something. Google's got oh, right there. there, right there. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. So yeah, this is thick. You know, there's no water in the makeup of the scar gel. That's actually one of the main parts of the formulation. Is you you have to have all the uh, tubes and everything that, that create this, uh, all the, uh, the the metal parts in the lab have to be bone dry because if any water gets inside, it messes with the composition. So then you have the scar gel and um, I want to show you, can you see my mm -hmm. hand okay? Okay. See. So I want to show you what happens when we apply it. So put a little bit down. I'll do a little bit more. Okay, and then so watch how well this spreads. I feel like I'm on a QVC commercial. <laughs> so watch, but I'm just showing you guys. I mean, whatever. If you don't want to buy it, it's fine, but you know, you should. So you, it spreads, look at that. It's already dry. So the silicone is there and we have here a matte finish. And that's, if you go on the website, it gives you all the, uh, the attributes of it. So this is a matte finish, you see? And so you can't really even tell that like anything is on there, but it's on there. So if it's on your face and you want to put like makeup over the top or cover up or concealer to cover up a scar, you can do that by first protecting it with the scar gel and then you can put makeup over top, right? And I think it's a good, so that's what makes it so nice. It's the spreadability, it's the matte finish, and it's just the way that it feels and it's very hypoallergenic. Uh, so all of those reasons, make it i think a superior product compared to a lot of the other stuff on the market so and it has these oils inside right the calendula oil sunflower seed oil uh, jojoba oil that have all been implicated in proper wound healing and so what that does is that it further enhances the healing of the underlying wound if there is one so so that's pretty cool so that's uh something we want to show you and just in terms of like let's say you have a fresh wound right or you just had surgery uh, should you start with the scar gel right away and the answer is no uh, you want to allow the epithelium or the surface to close properly in any way you should always get permission first from your surgeon or from wh whichever doctor is treating you before transitioning to this but let's say you just had like you know you just cut yourself at home and you don't plan on going to the doctors and you're just putting a little antibiotic ointment on um, and then you're like well when can i start the scar gel so you know that the epithelium has started to seal up nicely when you take hydrogen peroxide and you test it with we could take a q-tip drop some peroxide on there and dab it along your wound and see if it fizzes if it fizzes it means there are still some micro openings in which case you don't want to use the scar gel because it's not meant to be to go under the skin only on the surface so you continue using say antibiotic ointment or something like aquaphor and once you have full seal and the peroxide is no longer bubbling then you switch over to the scar gel and you use the scar gel twice a day morning and night um, and you can do that for up to a year or so after the injury so that's how that works all right uh, what else we got? Anything? So look, it's like totally nice, dry. Well, yeah, you don't have to reset it. Okay. Would the scar gel help with stretch marks? Um, maybe, partially, it can. Um, but, you know, try it on a smaller area and see if it helps. And then try it more broadly after that. Depends on, 
you know, if it's a newer stretch mark or if it's something chronic, but it has some potential, uh, but it's not fully intended for that. But something I think worth, worth trying out. Is it meant for ice pick, ice pick acne scars? So ice pick acne scars are usually a bit deeper. And so you might want to consider something else, something maybe more procedural like uh, subcision or excision of the ice pick scars. If you have a depression in the skin, the scar gel isn't necessarily going to cause a, enough fill in to get that leveling to be flush. So that's when you consider something more surgical or potentially maybe some laser resurfacing first or instead of. Uh, but there are you know, some acne scars it can help with, but I would say ice pick scar is probably not my first choice of what to apply it onto. More thank yous. Okay. Dear Karen J. Thanks for your support. Okay, that's for Karen J. Thank you. What else you have, Marco? How to tell if I have male pattern baldness? How to tell if you have male pattern baldness? Well, uh, you know, it's it's in the name, right? There, it's a pattern. So look up the normal Norwood Hamilton classification system and you can see if your hair loss resembles one of those types of patterns. There are some other variants of it, so always best to get an expert opinion, um, but you can start there. Oh, Cool Blue says that's me. Who are you signing for? Oh, uh, Karen, Karen J, or the next, well yeah, because I haven't announced the next one, so is that, is that, just double check, Karen J, is that Cool Blue? <laughs> Let's see what she says. Karen J, we can uh, write a nice message for you if you wanna <clears throat> give us your preference. All right, we'll come back to that. Okay, so we've got Victor G. Dear Victor G. Hope you love the product. Okay. Victor G, thanks so much. Oh yes, it is her. <laughs> it is her? So just ask her, does she want us to write anything special? No. You can draw a smiley face, I can do a lot of things. <laughs> Okay. Then we got Linda C. Linda C. Yeah, let me know if she responds. She says yes, would love it, but what does she want? <laughs> Karen, give us give us some uh, direction here. So far, I have thanks for your support, but I'm happy to write anything else that your heart desires. Linda C. Really appreciate you. Okay. Linda. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Also, for somebody who's just tuned in, can you tell us about your scar gel? What is the best use for old scars, dark spots, etc.? If not, what is best for scars that have darkened? Yeah, so um, there are, of course, uh, scars that can change pigmentation, hypopigmentation, hyperpigmentation. Um, there's um, hydroquinone, which is um, can be used for for reducing the pigmentation, but that should be something that comes from your dermatologist. But um, a, a depigmenting agent is hydroquinone. 
So that's something to consider. Uh, the scar gel isn't intended for that. It's more useful for fresh -er scars, I would say, under two years of age. Uh, but people might find benefit in using it on some older scars as well. We just got ignored. Cool. Did uh, Karen uh, reply or? Wish me a happy life. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. So we'll mail these out, I don't know, within the week or so. Wishing you a happy all right, here it is. A custom comment. Wishing you a happy life. You bring it down a bit? All right, that's cool. That's for Karen. Okay, so we did Karen, Victor, Linda. Okay. Karen, the newest one? Yes, yes, yes. Let's see who the newest one is. We have. Oh, mine's not refreshed because I'm using the check marks. Uh, okay, fine. I'll refresh it. Okay, Parker. Does Parker want something custom? Thank you, Parker. Dear Parker L. Parker L. Karen says, yay. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Thanks for your support. All right. This is for Parker L. Thanks, Parker. Does Parker appear up here, Marco? Uh, probably. I don't know for which state. We don't though. know which state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I cut into it sometimes. We had an audio issue when I would cut into it, but Liz actually told us about it, so we fixed it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay, some troubleshooting. How many people are in the chat now? Uh, 141. Oh, okay. Yes. See, uh, I don't know where I left off here. After <laughs> you're fine. Karen, <laughs> Linda, because I was checking them out. Okay, Paul. Paul L. Paul L. is next. We have three people checking out. Three potential... Thank you, Carl. Three potential. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Dear. By the way, we have like uh, 2,000 of these and some more at my parents' house. <laughs> some were, most of them were shipped to the warehouse in Florida, but some went to my parents' house because I live in the city. Oh, New Water. I live in the city and uh, we don't have enough room to store uh, scar gels. We have some in the office, of course, too. So, yeah, we only got, um, it was like 2,600 made initially. That's the initial batch. So once we start to sell out of those, we'll uh, probably bump up to maybe about 5,000 units or so. Parker L says, no thanks, just here because I set a calendar notification to buy online today. Okay, Parker, <laughs> great job, <laughs> great job. Okay, Paul, dear Paul L, a lot of L's. We also just got another one, by the way. Okay, one second. Thanks so much for your support. All right. Okay, Paul L. Thanks so much for your support. Appreciate you. Okay, so hey, let's take a Q and A, and then we can go back to this. I often have shedding from my eyebrows. It's recognizable as a slight thinning. I'm young and have quite a full head of hair. I do experience stress from studying, etc. Any idea what it may be? Okay. Well, you know, shedding in the eyebrows, the first thing I think of is a potential thyroid problem. So definitely, especially a younger person, so definitely get your uh, thyroid levels checked. And that's something your primary care doctor can order because you don't want to be missing an important underlying uh, condition. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot else. I mean, some people, that's where they can thin out. So you want to make sure that you're not like pulling out your brow hairs, that you're not overly plucking your eyebrows, um, you know, and then just monitor it. I mean, there are some more rare, uh, like scarring alopecias, like frontal fibrosing alopecia that can present with eyebrow thinning, um, and recession of the hairline in women. So there are, you know, some more rare things, but again, see a specialist, but those are some of my initial thoughts. Okay, we have Carlos 
C. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Does Carlos want a message? Custom message. Dear Carlos. Carlos C. Thank you so much. Carlos, appreciate you. All right, I'll put it on the side. I'm gonna head Paul. All right, you got any more for me? Can I smoke cigarettes after haircut? Well, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes for about a month before and after really any surgery because the nicotine can um, impede wound healing because it reduces the oxygen uh, supply to, to the tissues. Um, and that's, you know, been shown in many studies. So just be careful if you can uh, lay off the cigarettes for a month before and after, or at least two weeks before and after any surgery, uh, you'll be better off for it as far as your healing. Paul, okay, so now we have Tommy, Tommy W. Dear Tommy W. Really appreciate your support. Okay, Tommy, thank you. All right. Is it better to see a plastic surgeon office for acne scars or a dermatologist? Parenthesis, if laser is involved. Honestly, I would go with most like if there are some plastic surgeon offices that are great at this but i would still opt for a, a dermatologist like nine times out of ten to be honest with you i mean i just think that this is their wheelhouse this is what they're trained uh for primarily so uh you know i i would i would most likely just go with the dermatologist again assuming they have similar equipment and all of that all right so next one we have tessa C. Dear Tessa C. Hope you enjoy the scar gel. All right, perfect. Anything else, Marco? Mm -hmm. Tessa C, thank you. With microneedling in the scalp for hair loss, is it better rolling the fan or stamping? Also, can I use minoxidil right after? I don't care about the burning sensation. Uh, yes. So I would go with stamping. Uh, I had a gentleman I spoke to today in consultation who said that he just likes to do the roller that it's quicker for him uh you know it, it can damage the hair shafts to a degree so i think stamping is still better though it might be slightly less efficient in terms of time that it takes to to do the you know the procedure uh, and so that's question number one and then micro so sorry uh, minoxidil use yes it can cause a burn because the foam especially has um al it's like alcohol based so it can cause a burn you put it on right after microneedling but if it doesn't bother you you should be fine it can have some slight irritation but there is you know it's considered that like them together are going to give you better results than uh, one or the other alone so yeah you can do it right after or you can also uh, wait on the order of maybe you know several hours i think that's fine too you don't have to put it on right after i think one of the misconceptions when it comes to uh, Rogaine or topical minoxidil is that it's just working right where you apply it, right? But m the reason why it's actually working for the most part is because of systemic absorption, right? There's a lot of vasculature in the head and neck and as it absorbs, it starts to, you know, work systemically. So, and that's also why we generally recommend oral minoxidil because the bioavailability in your bloodstream is gonna be much higher with oral minoxidil compared to topical. So something to consider. Uh, next up is uh, Kathleen W. 
Dear Kathleen, thank you for trying out our scar gel. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Can finasteride or minoxidil grow hair back in spots where all hair has fallen out already, or is it just for thickening existing hair slash prevention? Yeah, so areas where you've lost all the hair, it's, it's unlikely that you'll get it back with minoxidil and finasteride. There are some cases where you can see some regrowth at the hairline, for example, but not that common um, if you're very aggressive with microneedling and PRP and everything under the Sun you'll probably get some regrowth in in those areas um, especially if you just lost those hairs if it's been like 20 years it's unlikely uh, but usually we think of minoxidil as like thickening the hair increasing the the, sh the, the shaft uh, diameter and then finasteride at reducing further loss uh, so usually you're not going to get a, a huge change with just the medical therapy in an area where you've completely lost your hair. We should turn these into shorts. <laughs> okay, Michael H. Dear Michael H. Well, it's been an hour already. We'll give it another maybe 15 minutes. Um, dear Michael H, uh, thank you for your support. Michael H, thank you. Okay, what else? recent months I have noticed that the back of my scalp is dry and peeling a little but the rest of my scalp is pretty is completely fine what should I do the back is peeling back is peeling and dry. yeah so make sure that your shampoos conditioners are you know moisturizing enough uh, and not further drying you out you can consider ketoconazole shampoo usually um, that's used like two to three times a week. Uh, that can sometimes help with, um, with that type of kind of uh, dryness. Uh, and if that doesn't help, definitely you know, see your local dermatologist just to, just to double check that there isn't um, any other problem with, with that um, part of your scalp. All right, so we did Michael's. Then we have Pamela, Pamela J, thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela J. Pamela. Okay. Is hair loss on the legs below the knees common on men? I have it on both legs, but above the knees. I'm a complete Wookiee. Maybe it's genetic. Hair loss below the knees? Yep. Um, he has hair above the knees. Okay. Yeah, I'm not not a not a common question, but it, you know when I started m with my like alopecia areata, it was actually on my legs first, um, also below the knees, like patchy losses. So it depends. Like, is it patchy losses? Is it just more diffuse hair loss? Uh, but there are different genetic patterns. So you know, but just keep in mind that if it's a patchy loss, then you might have alopecia areata. So Pamela, and then we have Heather S. Dear Heather S. 
We appreciate your support. Okay, what else? Any other questions? We're gonna be here for another like 15 minutes, guys. Do we have anything else? I recently had a cortisone injection done to my forehead, a dent appeared and has flattened out mostly, but it's still kind of there. And the cyst is back to, will it go away by itself? Yeah, I mean, this is why you have to be really careful with steroid injections. They can atrophy the tissues and sometimes the results are permanent. So it may not go away. Um, and she said the cyst is back or it's still there. Yeah, so definitely sort out the cyst issue first, and then when you're left with just like the cosmetic depression, uh, you know, you might need filler. But the thing is, forehead can be a tricky place, especially in the center, because you have a lot of blood vessels, and you don't want to get filler into uh, one of the important blood vessels, like the supratrochlear artery, because it can anastomose with vessels in the eye, and you can um, have vision problems after that. So you have to be really careful with filler into that space. So lateral forehead is going to be a little bit safer. Upper forehead is going to be a little bit safer. But central forehead by the glabella area, uh, much more dangerous for filling uh, depressed depressed zones. So just something to keep in mind. So that's Heather. Now we're going to go with Tracy H. Thank you, Tracy. Tracy H. We really appreciate your support. All right. And then, Marco, what are we doing with um, the rest of these thank you cards? Are we going to be doing this for maybe everyone who orders this whole week? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, yeah. So if you get the scar gel this week, week one there's of sales, there's a chance for a thank you card, okay? And uh, if you want, like, a special message on it, just send us an email. Um, send it to support at feelconfident.com and uh, we'll customize it for you. Cool, all right, what else? Again, we're talking about this scar gel right here. Mm -hmm. It's our first product, cosmetic product that we've released from the new Feel Confident brand. <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoy it. Can care transplants reverse baldness for someone, for someone who began losing care in their 20s? Asking for my dad, he's 50, over 50 now risks of infection slash other complications yeah you know there's no um age limit when it comes to hair transplantation i operate on many patients in their 60s and 70s and you know they have to be healthy enough for the surgery so if they're on blood thinners or anything else i mean most 50 year olds are very healthy um, or at least those who come to me but uh, you know, sometimes there's an underlying medical condition, so we always want to make sure that there's medical clearance in situations like those. But other than that, uh, it's totally fine. And yes, you can restore someone's hair as long as they have enough donor supply and as long as they're realistic with the, what their expectations are. If he lost most of his hair and he's 50 now and he wants to look like how he did when he was 20, that's not going to happen. But if he's looking for just improvement um, that we can surely do if there is enough donor supply and if there are no major comorbidities. And then, so not to confuse people, um, if you have questions for, for me and want to have a consultation, you have to reach out to info at cityfp.com. Uh, we also list our phone number uh, on YouTube, right? We have our phone number there uh, for the about section or, you know, just go to cityfacialplastics.com. Uh, we're actually working on an entirely new, uh, oh yeah, and then what? It might, well, just, just to finish my thought, if you're interested in the products or if you have questions about them, better to email support at feelconfident.com. Uh, we're working on a new clinical website that is just for hair, since hair has become uh, one of the main things that I do clinically. Uh, we wanted to have a website that was uh, representative of that. 
So it's going to be Linkov Hair, Linkov Hair Surgery. We're still working out the exact title, um, but that we're actively working on. And the aesthetic is going to be similar to the aesthetic of our new clinical space, which, as you guys know, through the recent vlog, we're in the early phases of uh, starting construction for that. So I think uh, the next uh, five, six months will be exciting and interesting when it comes to the development of our skin care and hair care products the new space, the new clinical website, the um, hair transplant app that I was mentioning earlier. So there's a lot going on. Uh, and then clinically in the practice, we're busier than ever. So uh, but we're only offering right now hair surgery for men and women, all types of hair surgery, pretty much anything you know under the sun. Um, when it comes to that, all types of uh, you know more like unusual things like eyebrow hair transplants, beard hair transplants, surgical hairline advancement and then like the standard you know scalp to scalp transfer we have a great team uh, great full-time team here uh, and then we're doing lip surgery cosmetic lip surgery occasionally i'll take on like a scar type of case if someone uh, emails like an interesting situation that i feel like i can help with but mainly it's lip lifts lip reduction corner lip lifts that type of thing so that's all we're doing because we're busy enough with that um, and then yeah we'll see see what happens in the future we'll probably take on someone another doctor or so into the practice to help with um, some of the other uh, procedures but of course it'll be someone who i can who i feel i can trust so that you know you guys get the best possible treatments so that's not exactly I mean, we have so many other directions right now but that's something within the next year i think i'm going to actively um, search for another surgeon to bring under our umbrella so we'll see but uh, lots of exciting things. I mean, I think at, at the core of it, we appreciate the trust that you guys put in us. Um, I think you know that you know we'll always do the right thing. Um, we'll always have the patient at the core, at the center of our decision making, and everything else is really secondary. Uh, so, yeah, a uh, couple more of these thank you cards, and then I think we'll head out. <laughs> so we did uh, Tracy H. Okay, so now Nelson S. Dear Nelson S. Okay. Thank you so much for your support. Cool. Nelson. All right. Anyone else, Marco? Questions? Have you signed the card for Heather? Heather P. She's in the chat now. Yes. You yes. 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 Does she want some some uh, customization? I the chat late. If you didn't prepare a card for me yet, I welcome any positive vibes for my facial recovery journey from facial paralysis. More importantly, can't wait to receive scar gel. Okay, facial paralysis uh, yeah. recovery. Oh gosh, okay. Heather, let's look for Heather's card. Oh, here we go. I got you, Heather. Okay. Heather, wishing you a speedy recovery. Okay, so here we go. Updated Heather's thank you card. Wishing you a speedy recovery. Hope the scar gel helps. Give us some feedback. Send us an email on how you're doing, uh, you know, in the coming months. Good for a question? Yeah. Um, uh, I have hair. I'm experiencing hair loss. My father also lost most of his hair. Have bald. He's a urolo urologist and he doesn't doesn't recommend me to use finasteride or minoxidil. I'm 18 and I do not want to get bald. Well, you, I think you're stuck uh, between a rock and a hard place, you know, because you know, obviously your father knows a thing or two about, you know, um, the effects of finasteride on the body. And you're young at 18. So you're going to likely continue to lose more and more hair so you have to decide you know is it worth taking on the risks of the 
medications and the side effects that that could bring? Um, or are you potentially okay then with losing some additional hair and getting some treatment down the road? But the, the best thing is always prevention. Uh, but it's difficult. It's a difficult decision to make for a young person. But you are 18, so you get to make these decisions for yourself. Uh, I have plenty of patients who've been on medical therapy for many decades and who started quite young and have no issues. I mean, that's the majority of people. So, of course, there are those who do get side effects uh, but recover once they stop the medications. So, again, this is a personal decision. There's no one who can tell you exactly what to do, but you have to... Uh, you know, forecast into the future and just figure out what you think might be more important for your health now and for you down the road as well. After having septic slash rhinoplasty, the size of my nose sunk in. Is there anything that can be done non-surgically? Yeah, so I guess septoplasty, rhinoplasty, the maybe the lateral wall of the nose um, sunk in. Well, uh, usually the best thing is a revision surgery for a case like that, uh, waiting at least a year from your prior surgery and then considering a revision with some cartilage grafting to pop that um, area out from the inside. The alternative is something like a HA filler. Um, the problem is when you go more laterally on the nose, there are more blood vessels and you don't want to get filler into those blood vessels because you can get serious problems from that. So usually filler is not recommended into the side wall of the nose. But again, you have to go to someone who um, is knowledgeable in both the surgical side and the non-surgical side who can give you the best um, possible advice after seeing you in person. I think we'll take another question or two and then we'll be done and we'll wrap up. Hi doctor, I'm almost 31 now and I'm starting to thin a bit around my temples and it's bothering me a lot. It's affecting my self-esteem. What is there to do before finasteride? Anything to thicken? How care? old, sorry? 31. 31 thinning around the temples? Yes. What to do before finasteride? Before finasteride. Well, I mean, if you're thinning, you're going to continue to thin. So finasteride is, is the obvious uh, next step uh, if you're open to that. Uh, minoxidil can help with thinning areas as well. Like I said earlier, we like them both in the oral form. And again, check out the Feel Confident hair section. It has those medications if you want to obtain them there. Uh, and lastly, I would say it would be the hair transplant, but um, oftentimes if there's just a mild thinning, you can get away without surgery and just doing medical therapy. So it just depends on the situation. All right, cool. You have anything else good? Because I think we'll wrap up. Uh, question about the use of Propecia in the periconception period and its teratogenicity. Uh, second, experience around scars with body hair transplants. So I guess those are two questions. From the same person? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, so when well, first of all, Propecia isn't recommended for premenopausal women because of the potential for uh, you know, birth defects. Uh, and in men, most men will try to come off of the, the medication um, when they're trying to conceive, right? Uh, we don't have any great data to say that there is serious risk uh, if the, the guy is on finasteride but um, most will trial off for several months um, or longer until you know conception so so that's that's something to consider and that's usually what i recommend just out of precaution um, second question was transplanting into what scar? scar we have a video mark what was that do you want to put a link it's the hair transplant scar video i don't remember what it was yeah. called but something along those lines. So yes, you can transplant SCAR and we have a video on that we're gonna put into the chat. Um, definitely useful to review. Uh, there's actually, there was a recent study that found that the SCAR itself softened once the hairs were transplanted into it. There's, so there's something about the increased blood supply from the actual grafted hairs that um, soften and improve the appearance of the underlying SCAR. Now, 
transplanting a scar, the survivability of those grafts are not good. It's not going to be as good as transplanting into healthy tissue. Uh, but depending on the exact scar, because the thinner the scar and the healthier the scar, meaning the more blood supply it has, the higher the chance of survivability. But when you have a really thick, wide scar that doesn't really bleed much when you work with it, the odds of survival uh, you know, are much lower into a scar like that. So it depends on the scar is, is um, part of the answer. So, okay, so good. So I think this was a great session. Hopefully you guys learned something and uh, and we, again, appreciate you with um, the support of the whole channel, but also with this latest launch of the scar gel and uh, the hair loss medications. So um, yeah, check us out, feelconfident.com, feelconfident.com. Uh, if you order the scar gel this week, we'll send you a thank you card and the scar gel is this. And then the minoxidil finasteride you can order through, we partnered with a third party um, company, actually a digital pharmacy and a third party company that has licensed physicians that do the prescriptions uh, through the website. So that's not coming from me or my team. Um, we still prescribe obviously, but for patients who come to us um, directly and become our patients. So it's a little bit of a different pathway. Uh, but we've really brought the price down significantly for the generic hair loss medications. And you can see our price comparison on feelconfident.com in the hair section. Towards the bottom, we compare it to Keeps, Hims, Roman, and we've really tried to uh, beat their pricing because we feel like the value added for generic drugs is that it's cheaper or else like it's nothing like we did we didn't do anything special other than set up this kind of little network of of organizations to get the drugs to you uh, but on the skin and hair side we're you know working on um, custom formulating everything from scratch with properly testing everything um, to get you guys some really nice great products that you can trust and use so great. Uh, anything else last minute, Marco? Uh, yeah, one question. It's a rare case. He says I had a rhino 1.5 months ago, and my facial edema is still present. Not just the nose; the whole face is swollen. I'm in touch with my surgeon, but any tips? And is there a possibility it'll stay? Swelling, facial swelling after rhinoplasty will always eventually subside. Uh, there are times when it can linger for a long period of time. So I know a month and a half, six weeks, right? It seems like forever. However, that's still very early in the healing process. It takes at least a year to fully recover, many times longer from a rhinoplasty surgery. So be patient, uh, you know, and uh, I would say, again, trust your surgeon because you trusted him or her in the first place. So trust that they can help you through the recovery as well. Um, that's it. Signing out. Thank you so much. Marco, anything else I have to say? Uh, visit feelconfident.com. <laughs> feelconfident.com. <laughs> we want you guys there. We want your feedback. Let us know. We're not quite ready to take like requests for more different types of products for the future. One day we will, but we're just working on the skincare, hair care products next, as I talked about in the start of this talk. And we'll keep pushing that along.